Hi everyone, Greg here at Zanata Consulting. Today we're going to talk about... Hold on. That can't be right, can it? You're trying to learn Deluge on purpose? <sighs> Fine. But remember, you asked for this. Before we get started, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I get a bonus if you do, so... Uh... <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, now before we go any further, it is important that you know that custom functions aren't available in every single Zoho app. And even the ones where it is supported, it can depend on your payment plan or your subscription. So. Before you keep going on these tutorials, be sure to check your app's help page and see whether or not custom functions are supported with your current app and current plan. For the examples in this video, I'm going to be using Zoho One because uh, it's the best. <laughs> now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Every deluge task is the same thing. Really, there's only ever three steps. You read data. You transform that data if you have to, and then you send that data somewhere. Uh, a simpler way to think of it is get stuff, change stuff, send stuff. In today's video, we're going to focus on that first part, getting stuff or reading data. That's going to include an intro to the Deluge editor, uh, as well as how to get records by ID, and then how to extract pieces of information from that data. To make your first CRM function, we're going to go into settings and down here we have a group of settings called developer space here we have our functions and here we can find all the existing functions already within our system if you want to add a new one we simply come over here to new function then we need to give our function a name you usually want to call a function by whatever it is that it's doing we're actually going to be looking for getting a deals stage. So we'll call it get a deal stage. Then the display name you'll do in proper case. And then in the description, we'll explain what the trigger is and what the outcome is. Then we have categories. The category determines where this function is going to be used. Is it going to be part of a button or a part of a workflow rule or a schedule? For right now, we'll go with automation because that's where most of your functions are going to be made. These are ones that are attached to workflow rules. Welcome to the Deluge Editor. Here we have our function name. There's its label and its description. We can also edit its arguments. In other words, what are we going to feed in to this function? We'll leave that alone for right now, but we will come back to it later. In this case, we're going to jump down to look at integration options. I'm going to drag over a Zoho integration, which you can also get some shortcuts to these by simply starting to type Zoho dot, but we'll use the drag and drop wizard first. Click on the little blue pencil here. First, we need to give our variable some kind of name. Right now, we're going to search for a CRM deal by the record ID. I'll go ahead and call this deal. We'll select the service. We're pulling from the Zoho CRM, but as you'll notice, you have a number of different apps here because you can actually talk to different Zoho apps from within a single Deluge function. You're not limited to just the app you're currently in. Then depending on which service we pick, we get different functions to choose from. In this case, I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom of get record by ID. Once we've selected our function, we have the parameters to fill out. The parameters are the pieces that the function needs in order to give us what we want. It needs a module, and it needs an ID. The module name we're going to get from the CRM settings, and here under developer space, select APIs, and then API names. Essentially, the API name is a permanent label for a particular field or piece of data that will allow you to change the label without having to go and change any of the functions that that field was tied to. For the most part, most of the modules, their API name is the same. 
One difference that you'll notice, for example, is in meetings. Meetings used to be called events. So even though it's called meetings in everybody's system, if you want to talk to it via deluge, you need to use the word events. In this case, pretty simply, we just have the word deals. But we have to also match the case. So we'll come back here and into the module, we're going to write deals. Now something interesting here is we can look and see what is the data type that it is expecting to receive. It wants text. In Deluge and in most scripting languages, text or a string is defined by having double quotes at the beginning and at the end. Next, we need the ID, which is just a number. That number we can get from any particular deal by going to a deal record and looking at the URL. There's a big old number up here. That's the ID number for the record. We'll copy that, paste that, and we'll click this insert button. And voila, chef's our line of code has been written for us. Now, if you didn't want to use the drag and drop editor, I could start to write out this same thing and there will be a lot of autocomplete options that I can use as well. Anything where I want to get or send any information to or from Zoho, I'm gonna start out by writing Zoho and then dot. Here I have a couple of system variables, but below here I have all the different apps that I can access. In that case, I can start to write CRM and again dot. And just like in the drag and drop editor, I have the list of all the different functions that I can use. And I used get record by ID. And now here I have, again, saying that it wants module as a text field and then an ID as a number. Now, as you'll notice here, it's saying it wants a number, an ID, and the autocomplete here says deal. So I might think, oh, if that's what it wants to put in there, I should probably put that in there. But that's actually not the case here. Deal is just another variable that we have. Zoho's just making its best guess as to what we might want to put in here, but that's not what we would want here. We would want a deal ID. Just keep that in mind of always take the suggestions with a grain of salt. Let's start by running our function. And hooray, it executed successfully. So what? Don't see anything here? Nothing's happened? What good is it? Well, we need to make some info statements to get some information to pop up here on the debug console. I can drag over from info onto here or simply write info. Both work, whichever is easiest for you to work with. With the info statements, I can write whatever I want here and have it appear, oh, unless I forget a semicolon. Don't tell Brett, he'll be so mad. I'll save and execute again, and it says, hello world. But of course, it doesn't really do much help to just write myself positive affirmations. Let's actually take a look at what comes back when we run this function. So I will info the particular variable. I'll hit save and execute. And woo, that's a lot of junk. Don't worry though. This is in a very nice format known as JSON or JavaScript object notation. All you need to know is that if we take this text and we go to any old search engine, let's show Bing a little love. No one goes to Bing, but today we will. And I'm going to search for JSON viewer. And you can pick any of these options. It does not matter which one. I'll go ahead and just pick this one called jsonviewer.com. That seems pretty good. And I will paste all of that text and I will click viewer. And lo and behold, it's now put it in a much easier to read style. Let me make it a little bigger for all of you at home. And you can see, I can see who the deal owner is. I can see the industry, the stage, the created time, etc. We only want to look at the deal stage. So in order to get a piece of information from this larger variable, we're going to do a dot get onto that variable. I'll start by writing deal, my variable name, and then press the dot. Here I've got different options of functions that I can run on a variable of this type. In this case, I want to get some information from it. So I will hit get. Then I need to put in a string of a key for which we want that key's particular value. If I come back to the JSON viewer here, you'll notice that each row here is a different pair of items separated by a colon. On the left-hand side, we have what's referred to as the key of this pair. And on the right-hand side, we have 
the value. So the industry for this particular deal has not been filled in. It's null. But I can see that its currency is in US dollars. So again, left side is the key, right side is the value. So in the case of wanting to get the deal stage, I'm going to copy this value here of stage, and we will paste that into this get statement. Ooh, I do get an error back when I'm trying to run this. Spoiler alert, I did it on purpose. You see that the get function needs to be assigned to a variable. I can't have this just sitting here all by itself. It has to be associated to something. So I will create a new variable called deal stage. Select, save, and execute. There we go, things are working correctly again. But I don't see the stage, I just see the same deal again. Well, that's because I need another info statement. So I will add an info, deal, stage, save and execute. There it is, clear as crystal. Now I got a lot of noise here now, and let's say I don't need to look at this right now. Maybe I might need to reference it later, but I'd like to clean up my console window a little bit. Simply do two forward slashes, and this line has now been commented out. When the script editor runs this script, any line that has two forward slashes in front of it will be skipped. So if I hit save and execute one more time, I only get the single info statement. Last thing to talk about here is input arguments. Right now, we have a deal ID that has been directly written into the code here. Sometimes it's known as hard coding a value. But obviously when we're going to attach this to something, we need this number to be able to change depending on which deal we want to pull. So we're going to change this value into its own variable. I'm going to call the variable deal ID. Now, of course, if I try to run this now, I'm going to get an error saying that deal ID is not defined. So I guess I could define it ahead of time and say deal ID equals the same number that we had, but now we're back to square one. This is where we're going to look at the arguments. So here in the edit arguments, I want the thing that I pass into this function to be deal ID. And the thing I get back will be the stage. So my parameter name is going to be deal ID, and I select the type that it is. In this case, an ID is just a big long number, so I'm going to select int for integer. Hit save, and now when I click save and execute, now a little pop-up comes up before the function actually gets executed, asking me to provide all of my defined input arguments. So I can come back to this deal, recopy this number, paste it in here, and now my function is running once again. Now this time with a variable deal ID. So now I could go to a different deal, one that is in a different stage. Click that deal name, copy this deal ID, run it again, and there you have it, my different stage name. That is how we pull and read data from CRM records. Pretty much the same thing is true in any of the Deluge apps. In the case of books or desk, all it really is is you want to pass in IDs of records that you're trying to grab is your arguments, then using the Zoho dot integrated functions in order to get your record using that ID number, then using get statements to be able to extract individual pieces of data from that. You'll need to be doing a little bit of back and forth as you copy and paste things from the console window and put it into, say, a JSON viewer to be able to read what is available for you to get. But eventually over time, you'll start to be able to just know what is already going to be in your JSON data. Before you know it, you'll be coding with the best of them. Stay tuned for the next lesson where we're going to talk about once you get this kind of data, what do you do with it? Make some decisions around it with conditions such as if or else if statements, or run something on multiple pieces of data using a for each loop, or manipulating uh, different numbers, adding, subtracting, dividing, what have you. So keep tuned and we'll see you in the next one. That's gonna do it for today's lesson. If you found this video helpful, which, uh, <laughs> I mean, obviously you did. I mean, come on. <laughs> we would appreciate a like and subscribe. Not only because some of us get a bonus, but also it gets the video in front of more people who might need the help. Also check the description for links to our resource pages that have other help articles or help videos based on other Zoho products.
as well as links to Club Zanata, a forum where we share code, answer each other's questions, and just get a chance to share community with other Zoho users. See you next time. Bye-bye.